You having fun? Yeah. yeah. All right, take number 70. 70. You guys know what time it is. It's turbo time, guys. All right, so obviously it's already finished, but we're going to uh, just go ahead and explain everything. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure you guys seen everything and be like, yo, what? Yeah, you we skipped over room? all that goodness. Sorry, we're excited. Um, so let's start at the bottom. We need to take the oil pan off to get the front cover off. We need to take the front cover off to weld the uh, actual AN fitting for the drain. That's obviously the oil drain. Um, and while we had the oil pan off, we had Josh weld in uh, some baffles for the oil. Um, so obviously we just then went ahead and reinstalled that. Actually I actually have a little clip of explaining the baffles that make a little sense. Okay, so this is my stock oil pan with um, a baffle kit that Josh welded in for me. Um, you can see there's basically little trap doors. So we go around a turn and all the oil slides to this side. It'll hit this baffle and close this and stay here where the sump will actually pick it up. So super rad, definitely good if you're going road racing. And then moving forward, we uh, had Josh weld on some AN fittings onto the valve cover also. Uh, went ahead and just wrinkle redded that thing again. We use the VHT paint. Yeah. Dude, they gave me a hard time. Everybody said, oh man, actually should have wrinkle finished your valve cover. But I didn't you have did any paint. one time, didn't you? Oh, it's all flaked off. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Uh, he welded shut the ports from the old PCV system. What was the reason for doing that? Just to have like a clean finish? Yeah. Yeah. No real function to it. As long as you plug them off, you're good. Um, and then these lines running off to uh, the, this half right here is an oil catch can that Josh made. And then this half right here is a coolant overflow. But it's cool having a nice combo and it fits the profile of this really well. CAD design. Yep. Cardboard. Vented because uh, turbo. Moving on to the intake, we cut off a lot of the old stuff on the intake, welded a bunch of ports shut. Heating up the aluminum of the intake so we can clamp the uh, some of the like, intake vacuum ports. AKA the the nipples. The nipples. Clamp the nipples. And then pull them out. Um, and then actually threaded, tapped and threaded the. Uh, um, some push to connect fittings, like that fitting runs to the boost controller and, I was trying to the boost uh, gauge and the blow off valve. Um, we ran some of those same things on the other side. You gotta uh, talk a little bit about those. They're pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome. A little push connect, guys. Um, running a Turbo Smart race port blow off valve. That's it. Josh, uh, Josh welded this whole Obviously all of the intercooler piping. Josh actually made this intercooler. We got the core from Vibrant, um, but he made the whole ends, the tabs that mount it, everything. That's all, all him. Um, Shoot, we didn't really just let them see that footage now.
say shit yet. Come Show ass is down. So going on to fuel, um, running a radium fuel rail with eight AN fittings, just looped a hard line back, um, got some nice little tabs that hold it down real snug. What um, injectors did you go with? Uh, these are Injector Dynamics uh, 1300X, 1350X, I don't remember. What was your reason for doing that? Um, well, if I go to E85, which I eventually will, I'm sure. Um, I can run them with that. It'll be good. Yeah, you beat me to it. Because that, that was on my game plan. Of Are you going to get 13s also? No, I'm getting 1700s. There, yeah. There but the main right. reason, too, is because of the stainless internals. But once you get in, like, crazy high injectors, then, like, idle kind of suffers a little bit. Uh, um, I did, think that's everything on the set. He did the custom exhaust manifold. Yeah, so he fully built this manifold. This thing is insane. Um, you can't really tell from up here, but... Uh, the hot side I got for my turbo is actually a divided flange. So what he did was he actually took, I'm pretty sure it's, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's cylinders one and four and two and three for, uh, I don't know. He actually knows the correct cylinders, but they're, they're, collect, they're um, piped into each other and then into the flange. So they're actually divided correctly. And then um, when you're running a single blow off valve off a divided flange, you gotta connect. So he has a bar that comes across from this side of the divided flange and this side to run to the blow off valve. Look at that fitment. Blow off, you mean the wastegate? I mean gate. the wastegate, sorry. The yeah, other, I, I the other the valvey guy that, yeah, does stuff. But basically he just mocked this up here at the shop and then welded it up at his house. And this thing is super close, but it's perfect. Yeah. And then um, I ran more of the same push to connect fittings. You can see them right here. You literally just. We could link these in the description below. Yeah, we got these guys off Amazon. They're amazing. How did and then you I come uh, across this. You just... I mean, well, you saw them in the GTR uh, airbag episode. Oh yeah. I have three cars on bags. So. <laughs> how how hard like, no like how good is this line holding up against heat and pressure? It's good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, pressure, it's like, I think rated like 200 something PSI. 
Um, we ain't going that heat. crazy. You don't want to get too crazy to exhaust, but I, that's why like down here, you can see I got one of those little metal clips. You can kind of see it at this angle, but um, that will hold it away from the manifold. So. Okay. Should be good. Um, also this stuff, like 60 feet of it is like $20, so. Very convenient. If something does melt, you literally have to, like no tools other than a blade. Damn, what the hell? Probably a Mustang or something. It's getting <laughs> hey, nice yeah. out, guys. All the cars are coming out. I was just, just about to say the same thing, probably Mustang. We gotta get this thing running. Next episode. But back, back to the <laughs> top. Um, Where'd you mount your max solenoid, your boost? So okay. actually, if you look through here, Water right here. Yeah. Oh, man. oh snap. So, snap. the the Put your hands on the line. the line from the from the cold side of the turbo and from the back of the um, the wastegate are both run to uh, I forgot what these called uh, bulkhead fittings. They're same. They're the same like push to connect style as these. Um, and basically that just lets a airline run through it. Again, if you saw the GTR episode, I used like six of those guys. Um, so that runs into here. Excuse the mess, but um, right next to my three PDMs is a regular like boost controller. Um, that is hooked up into my Hondata. And then obviously you can see the two bulkhead fittings that just run the two airlines. It's a clean setup and it's really easy to get to. And I can literally just take two bolts out and then un, uh, unplug those lines in like seconds. That is really convenient. What are you doing for gauges? Um, I have a, the AM's uh, boost gauge, just like a normal like boost gauge. And then, um, which cause I don't need like true boost or anything like that. Cause I'm not running an yeah, AM I got ECU. that and realized when I bought it, it's overkill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, and then also their uh, wide band. Okay. Yeah. So those are the two gauges I'll actually have on the dash rather than the gauge cluster. I have one more question. Cooling. What do you mean? How, like, how's your cooling set up? Well. Just for those that have Air runs through the intercooler, then through the radiator, and then through these two 10 inch ball fans, and then it'll come up and out through this crazy carbon vent thingy I made. Yeah, you snuck in and did that one day. Yeah, I didn't film that either, sorry. <laughs> I got too excited, I'm like, oh, turbo. Dur, dur, dur. Um, and you went with the is that speed, all? I feel like there's more. Speed factory, dual pass radiator. Yep, speed factory dual pass with uh, dash 16A and lines, which you guys have seen before. Um, oh, and the whole downpipe and exhaust. And Which turbo did, that you went with. Yeah, oh yeah, so. <laughs> the turbo is the SXE 250, 257? I don't remember, what the hell. Borg Warner. Borg Warner. That uh, Johnny. Titanium downpipe. Uh, yeah, full titanium downpipe. Uh, obviously that's the AEM guy. Uh, my door will work. I said it in the first episode and then I kept explaining it every time and told people just don't worry. He cut the carbon. Sure. Yeah, I cut it the other day, but I still need to actually slide the hinges back a little bit so the door can close a little better. And then this piece will be capped in here. But the down, the actual whole exhaust, this is a slip fit. Um, then it gets two clamps, uh, one here, one here, that actually hold it up. It's right now just chilling. But if you have an S2000, you know they vibrate like crazy oh, and yeah. they break stuff all the time, <laughs> especially with a huge turbo hanging off the side of your manifold. Ask Xavier how many times he's. I don't even want to go into that topic. <laughs> <laughs> the morning that we went to Mishimoto, it looked crazy, but like it was way crazier than actually. Like Greg's car wasn't starting. We had a hot wires ignition, and Xavier realized he had a huge crack in his manifold. Had to go get that welded. Like this is all at like 10 a.m. and we need to leave. This, like, welcome to Turbo Life. So yeah. anybody that wanted to do turbo, be prepared. Crazy. Um, so I think. That's pretty much everything. I mean, I went like super ricer boy and got that skunk too. God, yeah. It looks so <laughs> much better, I'm not gonna lie. It's, I mean, it's kind of covered and you don't, can't really see it. And then I deleted the uh, VTEC uh, pressure solenoid joint. 
you don't need it. Yeah, you don't need it. If you have a standalone, you can kind of pressure it. You can time it in at whatever RPM you want. Um, got a new throttle position sensor because my old one was. Oh, damn. You didn't even tell me. You went with a bigger throttle body, too, which you got skunk yeah, too. Yeah, I went. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I got footage of that, too. I went, yeah, with the skunk 2, bigger throttle body. Then I actually uh, just by hand uh, ported the intake manifold also. Because um, then. Uh, and then went with the. Skunk to uh, four bar mat. Okay, that was, I was just about to ask what you do for mat. Yep. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. But so coming up next, we got to we have to basically set up all these new parameters in my Honda Tune, and we'll give you guys a little insight into that, um, and then hopefully start it up. Uh, I got to set up these gauges first, so I know at least like wire them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll wire them all up. I'll get the dash set up, and then we can get Scott and uh, Josh down here, and they can help us set up a nice bass tune so we can drive the thing around. Yeah, I hear start you. It up. It's coming soon. Two K nineteen takeover. And then we'll we'll talk about this stuff later. Don't worry about that. I'm real excited. Shh. Shh. I feel too much. Shh. These are wrapped up. You don't even know what these are. It's a burrito.